So I recently covered the Vivo V30, and this here is the V30 Pro. So the better model of those two phones there. What is different with the V30 Pro is they have partnered with this model with Zeiss. So just like their X100 Pro flagship, we have the Zeiss Color Science and they've got their lenses too as well with it. And a portrait camera too, dedicated just for that is a two times optical zoom camera. And they have the ultra wide 50 megapixels and the main camera 50 megapixels. Got the Aura Light again with this particular model, just like the V30. And the chipset is the other change. So it's the Dimensity 8300 with the V30 Pro. Just like the V30 that I've covered, with the V30 Pro you get a TPU case, it does fit it perfectly. This right here is our warranty card and then there's a quick start guide there too, that's our paperwork. And then we get our 80 watt flash charger and a type C to type A cable. Uh, what is just off camera here is a SIM tray tool that you also find in the box. So there are some similarities, in fact a lot, when it comes to the build and the look and style of it compared to the V30. The Pro here does have this unique style to it. So we have this waving water, this 3D, sorry, pattern petal effect on it. You can see it does actually look almost like little petals inside there and it does have that 3D effect. You can see some depth to it as well. Now this is a matte finish and because it's quite light it does not pick up fingerprints so that is really quite good and you'll see that we've got the Aura light again here so that is the Aura portrait light that you can use for portrait video, portrait photos and food photos as well and you can adjust the white balance of it and it is particularly bright and the difference here too is we do have now the Zeiss branding so co-engineered with them and you do get the two times optical camera. So three 50 megapixel sensors on the back here. Another difference is the ultra wide with the pro version can shoot 4K video. And with the standard version, the V30, it's only 1080p. So there's a bit of a difference there. Plastic frame here and the weight of it, well, it's not bad at all. It's not, I don't think it's a, a heavy phone too because it's quite light. It's 188 grams. And you notice that coming from the heavier flagships weighing say, to 20 or so. Thickness also quite thin. So looking at the size of it here, just measuring without that camera module, it is just 7.45 millimeters. Uh, right up the top here, it does say professional portrait. There's a mic right there and just the single loudspeaker. So exactly the same as the standard version, only a single loudspeaker. Now to compensate, Vivo upped the volume, but I don't think they're particularly good sounding speaker that we do have with it. Type-C port, now this does support uh, just data, USB 2 unfortunately, and no video out with it either. And the SIM tray, well it takes two nano SIMs here, this is our microphone. So again, that plastic frame on it, but it keeps the weight down, does feel really good, it does not feel cheap at all the phone. And then our display, which is the same as the V30 model, so they're just reusing that, they didn't change it or up the resolution or anything. So it's 2800 by 1260, this is in the settings, you get a lot of options, so screen colors can be adjusted. Peak brightness, Vivo's claim is 2800 nits, so I'm measuring just over 1200 nits. I don't know what the trigger is, probably HDR to get it to come on in that super ultra bright mode, but as it stands, measuring it and looking at it in direct sunlight now, it's a screen that is fully legible right out in the sun, so not a problem at all. It doesn't dim off really quick either, so you've got plenty of time to use it. You can see it in direct sunlight. That's the main thing here. 120 hertz is the refresh rate, and I've forced it onto that, onto high. By default, it's smart switch, so that'll be going from 60 uh, to that 120 by itself when it decides it needs to use that. So in the UI, it's 120 hertz. 120 frames per second, but with static images, it'll drop that refresh rate right down, which is pretty standard. Touch gestures are working well. Everything is very responsive to touch, and we have that Dimensity 8200 that is powering this, and I've got 12 gigabytes of RAM with 12 gigabytes of caching. Uh, that is what they like to call that extended RAM, but it's just a caching system. It's very fluid, very, very smooth. I've had no issues with how fluid everything is. It's really good to performance. It feels basically like a flagship. Then lastly, with our cameras, we've got a 50 megapixel front facing camera. So the same as the V30 and this has auto focus. It's an ultra wide camera too. So something a little different. In fact, um, really a lot better than a lot of flagships I see, the kind of selfies you can get out of this front facing camera. I'll give you samples later on. You can see those 
bezels there again, the curvature to the, to the screen with the colors kind of shifting off just a little bit here and being a bit kind of brighter on the edge right there on the left hand side, but that is standard. The bottom bezel you can see, chin, nothing special. It's not ultra short or anything like that, but it's not a bad bezel overall. Very, very good looking screen. And I like the design. I like the thickness and the lightness of it. Now the in-screen fingerprint reader is optical and it does work really well. I wish the position was a little higher. I find it to be a little bit awkward to get to when I'm holding it. I can get to that power button really easy, uh, but then the fingerprint reader, I feel it should be about here. And there's a lot of brands doing that. And the reason behind that is probably because there's some components or something in the way why they can't have it a bit higher, but it does work really well. I've had no issues again with it. And it is, I think, the same hardware that is in the X100 Pro. So that is my go-to phone. This is now my main phone that I use, the X100 Pro also from Vivo, with, again, the, the Zeiss optics in there and their color science too. Really do like it. Uh, that's using a one-inch sensor. And the flagship phone is a lot more expensive. But this, the UI here, FunTouch OS, and really I'm seeing the same kind of performance out of the flagship with a Dimensity 9300 as I do with this particular model here. So that is great. So it is working really smooth and no issues, no bugs that I've encountered. However, I do have the same complaint that is with their vStore. So you have their vStore that is already, of course, their own app store, but they're pushing that a lot now, Vivo, and there's a lot of bloatware pre-installed. You've got hot apps, hot games, that you need to go into the vStore to disable. You can't just remove it from the UI, which is, a bit annoying and recommended there's a lot of other things in there too as well so i just hope that vivo tones down a little bit on their bloatware pushing of their own app store i do understand but i think they're just a little bit too aggressive in their approach in doing so uh just pushing it a lot battery life just like the v30 is very good i find this phone to be great when it comes to battery life and of course we do have that 80 watt flash charging and the 5000 milliamp hour battery now the charge times you can see here very good, 37 minutes to go from 17% to 100. No complaints out of me from that. Now you ignore this here, current estimated capacity, that is estimated, it will be higher than that. That's just what, and Tutu's worked out here, the battery gauge, the monitor I use to time how long it takes to charge these phones. So it's always a little bit inaccurate. <clears throat> Take that, excuse me, with a pinch of salt there. So the score here, very good. We're nearing almost a thousand points with N22 version 10.1.7. So that's great performance there. It did go up 8.4 degrees. So that is kind of normal there. Internal storage speed. So it's UFS 3 that they're using. We're getting close to 2000 megabytes per second sequential reads and writes there, and random access is also very good. Now, these kind of storage speeds, they're not going to hold up or bottleneck anything. In fact, performance is really quite good. So what about throttling? Well, the chipset is cooled really well. There basically is no throttling. I mean, 0.4%. That is it. It's not, it's one of those chipsets that's not powerful enough to actually generate really enough heat to make itself throttle. So performance is consistent when you game and it's actually quite good. I'll show you that later on in this review. So thermals, it gets up to 40 degrees. We see other phones getting up to 45 here. So it gets a little warm to the touch, uh, but no need to break out my thermal probe imaging camera and whatnot because it really is good, the thermals. I don't really have any problems with it at all. It just gets a little warm there. So that's it for my little benchmarks I have covered there. Just to point out that it does have a wide vine uh, level one cert two with this particular phone. So it's just like the other you can see here too. DRM info, just bring that up for you. Level one cert and it does support, you can see HDR 10 as well, but no uh, Dolby Vision with that camera. Two API support is also level three, the maximum there with this phone. And then audio, I'm sure Vivo's getting a lot of stick for this, and that is the fact that it's just got a mono down with firing speaker. So to compensate not having a hybrid system, so an earpiece slash loudspeaker at the top, they upped the volume quite a bit of that single loudspeaker, so the loudness checks out, it's good, but I don't find it really to be a quality speaker at all. Now I'm gonna play a track here uh, from NCS, which is copyright free music here. That's my reasoning behind choosing this. And you hear at 100% volume that, yeah, the loudness is all right, but yeah, it doesn't sound really that good. So they've missed an opportunity here. This should have a dual setup for loudspeakers, a stereo loudspeakers, not just the single downwards mono one. Here's that sample. So 
So you should have heard from that that there is, yeah, a little bit of bass to it. Triple's okay, but it just should be dual speakers. There's no excuse. And a gaming performance, this is Genshin Impact on the top settings is faring better than I expected. Now you would think that this chipset probably couldn't handle it maxed out 60 frames per second and well, it does show at times it's struggling a little bit when there's a lot of action going on, a lot of different enemies and whatnot. You do see a bit of that, but it's handling it pretty good I think, not bad at all, but I would probably go with medium settings with Genshin Impact just to ensure you're going to have uh, that stable, sweet 60 frames per second you want the whole time and not have those little lag dips now and then. You can see now the frame rate I noticed has just dropped off a little bit with all the flame and these enemies, even in this area of the map, which is, you know, not actually the most demanding, but maximum settings stressing it out a little bit. So it will get warm to the touch, as I mentioned and showed with 3D Mark. It's about the same, so it gets up to... Uh, physically to the touch 40 degrees, which is kind of normal. So you feel around here it gets quite warm uh, Just around the frame as, as well gets warm. Okay, the accelerometer was a little slow then to flip the screen But all up better than expected gaming performance Moving over to the V30 Pro's front-facing camera. So like the V30 that I've already reviewed It's a 50 megapixel camera and exactly the same 4k at 30 or 60 frames per second does not have any electronic image stabilization. As you can see, it is shaking around all over the place. So you're gonna need a gimbal if you wanna use 4K with a front-facing camera, or stick to 1080p, which does have electronic image stabilization. Audio bit rate is 256 kilobits per second. Quality is okay. It was struggling a little bit with the exposure just before, but let's have a look at the rear cameras now. Unlike the V30, the Pro version does allow us to shoot with our ultra-wide camera in 4K. That one's limited to 1080p and the quality is terrible with the V30, it's ultra-wide video. But this quality is alright, I can see it looks like it's dropping frames a little bit. So I can now apply some zoom here and it's gone over now to the main camera. So this is our main 50 megapixel camera here. And I can continue to apply some zoom here. So I'll go up to two times. You can see it swapped over to the two times camera. And this is now 2.5. And I'll bring it up to 3.5 here. The quality is starting to degrade a little bit. Video quality is alright, not bad at all. But what impresses me more is the still photography. Especially with the Zeiss optics and that Zeiss natural color mode. Which I will show you now with some camera samples. For these samples, I use the Zeiss Natural Color Profile, which does come with a phone, so that's part of their co-engineering. And looking at the photos of flowers, very good. You see very little clipping. Color accuracy tends to be very good. White balance seems to be pretty much spot on. That's the difference between the V30 and then the V30 Pro. So that was the ultra-wide camera just before, one time. So this is now the two times camera here, which gains quite a bit of detail. I took it up to four times digital. We start to lose some quality there, not looking quite as good. This is another two times optical sample, which is again, okay there. Portrait shots are this phone's strength, so they do look very good. Good stitching, I like the colors again, using that Zeiss natural profile, and the stitching very good here. This is the two times optical using that one for portraits, and here is our selfie camera. So overall, pretty good photos, low light performance, Good, but I find that the sky just has a little bit of noise to them, but otherwise uh, not bad at all for a mid-range phone. So I would go for the V30 Pro if you can, if you're looking at the V30 series, because you get that better portrait camera if you take a lot of portraits. You get a much better ultra-wide, especially in terms of video performance, because I found that the Vivo V30 video, it's 1080p. It's washed out if you see my review of that phone. It looks abysmal, it's not good, it's terrible. But we still have, with the 4K front-facing video with this model, no electronic image stabilization. That's disappointing. The other is, of course, the only single firing downward speaker. So there it's very, very similar to the V30. And I like the Zeiss color optimization, more true to life, more natural looking white balance and just in general skin tones and things and portraits do look better with this model here with the Zeiss co-engineering. So working together with Zeiss, they, I, they have really improved the cameras versus the base model with this uh, V30 Pro here. And of course you get the better performance out of this model too with the upgraded chipset. 
So the rest of it really kind of the same, the screen, all of that build quality I do like. It feels very light in hand and it's nice and thin. So that is the Vivo V30 Pro. Thanks a lot for watching this review.